Hello gang, welcome back to my bar. Indeed, it's been too long, a long time. Oh, yes indeed. We are gonna talk about going to the Bahamas, Exumas, and chartering a boat there. It is in a magical, wonderful place, completely different than the BVI. Although, just as beautiful. A lot of people say, think it's more beautiful. Ah, I just think they're different as all. The BVI has so much to do with so many restaurants and, and beaches and, and places to hang out and the willy tea and what have you. The Exumas is more about nature and beauty and just the most gorgeous water on planet Earth and hundreds and hundreds of islands that you can spend time at. A lot of you have asked me for this seven day itinerary, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our charter together and we're gonna figure out where we're going in the Exumas. Okay, first of all, unlike the BVI, where you can charter from Marine Max and Moorings, in the Bahamas, you have to go to one or two locations. If you want to charter from Marine Max, you have to go to the Abacos, which is north of Nassau, and that's a whole different trip up there. Or if you charter from the Moorings, you're gonna do it out of Nassau and you're gonna to go to the Exumas, which is south. They're both equally wonderful. I would say the Exumas have more to offer than the Abacos, so that's where I would go. With that being said, we're gonna charter from the moorings. About four or five years ago, the moorings base there in Nassau was uh, just shy of pathetic. It wasn't really good. The boats were in really bad shape. But in recent years, they have really upped their game. And they are now at Palm Key, which is on the southern part of the island. So we're gonna get there and we're gonna do a sleep aboard. So now we're gonna do day one. Now here's the thing. In the Exumas, you can island hop for a month or two and never hit the same island. So for me to tell you that this seven day itinerary is something you should stick to, please don't. There are so many islands that you could just park at and stay if you want. It's just, it's amazing. But the, I'm gonna give you seven points of really great interest that I think you're gonna really, really love. And the other thing is, you always continue to work your way south. Well, eventually, you gotta get back up north because you gotta turn the boat in, right? You have to kind of decide, are you gonna do a lot of island hopping all the way down, then make a long trek back? Or you're gonna make a long trek down, then island hop on the way up. You know, there's lots of different ways to skin this cat. But I'm just gonna give you seven points of interest that I think you would wanna spend your seven nights in the Exumas. We're gonna start off by leaving Nassau. Now look, you gotta go about two hours away just to get to the first island. And I would go directly southeast, straight to Allen's Key. Allen's Key is a gorgeous little island. Well, they're all gorgeous, by the way. You're gonna hear me say gorgeous a million times. Allen's Key is a gorgeous little island inhabited by iguanas. They're all over the place. They come out, they, they greet you, they look for food really more than anything else. And if you got some lettuce or something like that, you can give them a little food. They ask you not to feed them, but you know, stuff happens. But uh, it's a really easy bay to anchor. By the way, in the Exumas, you are anchoring all the time. Very few mooring ball fields in the Exumas. It's all about anchoring. You can hang out there at the beach if you want. We're gonna stay there about an hour or so. We're gonna stay and have lunch on board our boat. And then we're gonna take about a 30 or 45 minute cruise straight south to Norman's Key. We're gonna pass up Highborn Key. We'll come back to that later. Norman's Key was a drug island back in the 70s. Some drug dealers came in, built an airstrip. The cocaine came in from Columbia, landed there. They partied, refueled, and went to the States and spread the love, so to speak. That landing strip is still there. And so what they're doing now at Norman's Key, they have built a wonderful marina where you can stay the night and you'll want to have dinner at McDuff's. It's a wonderful, wonderful restaurant. Best steak I've ever had in the Exumas. I don't know why. The other thing you got to hit when you're at Norman's Key is you got to go dive the plane. Remember I said, you know, drug planes coming in? Well, one of them didn't quite make the runway and it landed in the bay right next to Norman's Key. So, depending on the tide, but look at the tides and go dive the plane at low tide. When you do it at high tide, the current is too swift. It's, it's very difficult to get down to the plane when you're at high tide. So look at your tides and go dive the plane at low tide. We went into the marina at Norman's Key, then got our dinghy took the dinghy, it's right around the corner from the marina that the plane is, and we went and dove the plane there. And even the top part of the plane was kind of sticking up out of the water at low tide, which allowed me to tie the dinghy there so it wouldn't float away. And then we had a wonderful time just diving it for 30, 45 minutes. Diving the plane at Norman's Key is a must. So after we spend the night there, now it's time for day two. Where are we going now? Well, only 30, 45 minutes away is Shroud Key. 
Now here's the great thing about Shroud Key. There are these beautiful little rivers, they're really creeks, I guess, that go all the way through the island. You can just see it from above. They just snake all the way through the island. Okay, well, why are we gonna go in these creeks? Well, on the other side, on the Atlantic side of the island, are gorgeous beaches, one huge beach, and it is so much fun hanging out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in our dinghy, we're gonna go through, and we're gonna hang out at that beach just about all day long. So you wanna pack yourself some food, some drinks, if you got some chairs, bring those, towels, and just lay out on that beach all day long. Trust me, it is worth it. It's a quintessential hang at the beach in an Exuma's kind of way. So towards the middle of the afternoon, we're gonna get back in our dinghy, and we're gonna take the creek back. Now look, if you're on the creek and it's low tide, you may just have to get out and walk. <laughs> because your, your dinghy's gonna hit the bottom, but it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you can, you can find a little areas where there's enough water to keep your dinghy going. Uh, so don't, don't, don't be afraid of getting stuck. So you, you really won't. We're gonna get back to our charter and middle of the afternoon, we're gonna make a hike down to Wardrick Wells. Wardrick Wells is one of the most unique places you've ever seen in your life. There is a mooring ball field there and you're supposed to reserve the mooring ball the day before. The problem with that is the only way to reserve it is to do it on the radio. Well, but if you're not within distance of talking to them on the radio, then you can't reserve it. So it's a little weird. So what they do is every morning they assign the mooring balls based upon the requests they've had. That, that's what they tell you to do. I've never had to do that. So what I do is when I get within radio distance of them, I just give them a call and say, I need a mooring ball for tonight, what do you have? And sure enough, they always have one available. And you have to go in and take a specific route. You will see that they have dredged a route that goes in the little cove there and around and there are mooring balls with numbers on them and they'll assign a ball to you, number six, number nine, whatever. Stay in that little lane because if not, you're gonna end up on a sandbar. Another great thing about Wardrick Wells is, is when it's at low tide, you're just surrounded by sand, you're literally surrounded by sand. You can take your dinghy and within a matter of seconds, you're over on the sand and you can just sit and enjoy yourself, have lunch, swim, whatever you want to do. It's a beautiful, beautiful place and it's very well protected from wind and all sorts of weather. Now, you got to make your own food at Wardrick Wells. There are no restaurants, nothing there. A must though, is you need to walk up Boo Boo Hill. I have no clue why it's called Boo Boo Hill. It just is, okay? So <laughs> you just walk up Boo Boo Hill and when you get there, everyone has painted a piece of wood or a board or something like that with the name of their boat or their charter or their family name and they leave it on Boo Boo Hill. Why? Well, the theory is if you sacrifice something and leave it on Boo Boo Hill, then the weather gods will be nice to you. Not, no rain, no wind. It didn't work for us. We had a lot of wind last time, but nonetheless, it was fun walking up Boo Boo Hill. So we spend the night there at Wardrick Wells. Make sure you dinghy in and pay for the mooring ball. Well, where are we going? It's day three. Now we're gonna go to Compass Key. This is so much fun. Compass Key, again, is about 30, 45 minutes away. So we're still going south. You can reserve a slip there at Compass Key ahead of time. You can call them. Just look up their number and give them a call. And when you come in, they're very helpful. They'll find you a little spot. It may be a little crowded and cramped in there. Get and it is a little tight sometimes. There's great help there and it's easy to go in. Now here's the thing at Compass Key. What's it all about? It's about the sharks. Swimming with sharks. If you're squeamish about sharks, this is not the place for you. But these are nurse sharks. They're so sweet and nice. They love to be rubbed on their belly and their back and you can get in the water with them and swim with them. And they're just as fine as they can be having you there. They're glad you're there because they get fed a lot, that's why. The only rule they, they tell you is just don't stick your hand in their mouth, which is a, probably a good, good rule. Other than that, they are so sweet and it's so fun to swim with sharks. They also have a grill going there, so they'll cook you up hamburgers and hot dogs uh, for lunch, not dinner. So if you need a lunch, you can get one there. The other great part about Compass Key is about a half hour walk and you're on the other side of the island, the east side of the island, on yet another incredible beach. The beaches at the Inzumas, I've, I've mentioned it, are the best ever. So after we swim with the sharks, we go over there and just spend the rest of the evening or afternoon into evening at the beach. It's just, it's just a fabulous place. On that night, we make our own dinner again because there's no restaurant at Compass Key, just know that. Day four, we wake up and guess what? It's pig day, the famous, pigs of Big Major's Key. We get in our charter, we leave Compass Key, we go down south even further now, and we make it to Big Major's Key. The whole place is inhabited by pigs. 
I don't know how they got there. These pigs live here and they are a bit aggressive, I will tell you. They can bite because they're just looking for food because everybody just hands them food. So if you stick your hand out, they're gonna come up and bite your hand. So you just gotta be really careful about it. Drop the food. These are some of the biggest pigs you've ever seen in your life. They act like pigs, but they can also swim. They will swim out to your dinghy on your way in. All you do is just anchor right in front of the, the beach there and you dinghy in and by the time you're in, you're surrounded by pigs. So you can stay there as long as you like. Just depends on how much you like pigs. You know, the last time I went it was my daughter and my nieces and the, you know, girls love pigs. I don't know why. So we stayed there a while. Now, when we're done with the pigs, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lift up my anchor and I'm gonna go literally about five to 10 minutes north next to Fowl Key. Fowl Key is a private resort. They've got like eight or nine rooms, that's it. And an incredible restaurant. So what happens is if you call Fowl Key and say, hey, look, we're, ch we're a charter and we're out here on, on the hook over here in the bay and we'd love to come over for dinner. And if they have room in their dining room, in other words, if, if not all eight or nine of their rooms are occupied and they have a table available, they'll give it to you. So what we do is we just call them and make a reservation. We call them on the radio, say we're coming. We go over on the dinghy. Last time we did it, it was really rainy and wet, but it's a lovely dining room and an incredible bar and sweet people run the place. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful dinner. It's a prefix all-inclusive dinner. So it's just one price per person. Okay, day five. Now we're gonna go over to Staniel Key. Staniel Key is literally about 20 minutes away. You can do one of two things. You can anchor right there in front of of the marina, or you can take a slip at the marina. Either way, the Staniel Key Yacht Club. By day, the bar is a wonderful place to hang out, and by night, they have a beautiful dining room. There are two seatings, usually at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., so you gotta call and make a reservation for the, for the dinner. Well worth it. The other things at Staniel Key is it's just a beautiful low-key little island in town, and you can walk around or you can rent golf carts, you can rent bicycles and go around. It's just kind of a fun little place to hang out. It's very, very, very low key, as I said. And they also have some cabanas there that you can rent and spend the night. The other thing to do at Staniel Key is the Thunderball Grotto. This is basically a cave. It's called Thunderball Grotto because the movie Thunderball from James Bond was filmed in this cave. You gotta go at lower tide because if it's at high tide, you, you gotta swim under the water to get into the cave, and I hate doing that. At low tide, the cave is exposed and you can just swim right in and that's what you want to do. So you take your dinghy over there, you, you have to anchor your dinghy somewhere over there and then you just swim into the grotto. We stayed there probably 45 minutes. You have to tread water a lot, but it is one of the most gorgeous things you've ever seen in your life. But the Thunderball Grotto is definitely a must at Staniel Key. Okay, now we've been going south, 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 right? So now we wake up and it's day six. Well, we got to get back to Nassau, which is probably more than three and a half hours away right now. So we got to start making our way back. And you'll recall I said Highborn Key. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a two and a half hour trip back north and go to Highborn Key. Highborn Key to me is life in the Exumas. It is just a five star first class island that has a beautiful restaurant called Zuma's. It has a little gift shop and grocery store. The marina is wonderful. There's a parrot that lives there that everybody knows and a couple of private beaches that you can make your own. So what we're gonna do is on day six, we're gonna make our way all the way back. We're gonna get there after lunch and I'm just gonna anchor in front of one of these beaches. And then we're gonna take our dinghy and go to the beach and, and call it ours for the rest of the afternoon. Very simple. Then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna go get a slip at the marina. I like staying at the marina. It's easy. The restaurant is to die for, so I want to eat at that restaurant twice. It's that good. And then on day seven, I'm just going to explore that the other side of the island. There are baby goats you can go pet. There are hiking trails that go all the way around the island. They have cottages on the island to rent if you wanted to do that. I'm just going to stay there because I just love being on that island. Now, here's another thing that happens. When the fishermen go out and catch a fish, they'll come in and they'll clean it there. And when they do, the sharks appear. These are not the kind of sharks you want to swim with, especially while they're feeding. Unlike the nurse sharks, these sharks have really big teeth and they're not so happy. So we're not going to swim. We're just going to watch. And sometimes the fishermen will just cut off a piece of, of halibut or tuna or whatever they got and just give it to you right there and it's the best sushi you've ever had in your life. I don't know if you can hear it, but my ice maker's dumping a bunch of ice back there, so I'll take a drink. 
All right, so that's it. That's the end of the seven days. I mean, we've done a lot. It's the prettiest water you will ever see in your life. Now we gotta get back to Nassau. Again, it's about two hours or so, depending on how fast you're gonna drive, right? You gotta turn the boat in by 10 a.m. So it's kind of an early morning to get there, but to get there, and the great thing about Nassau is it's really small, so you can get to the airport by noon and you're out of there in your home by the end of the day. Thank you for watching these videos. If you have questions regarding the seven day itinerary, please ask me, write them down, and then I'll do a video answering those questions. Hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all new subscribers, and thank you very much for watching.